Welcome back to Sprague River Homestead. Today we're going to go into solar power and how to further define the lifestyle you want to lead. So a lot of times when people ask about going solar, one of the first questions I give them back is, how do you want to live when you're off grid? Defining your future power requirements a lot of times is pretty difficult. When we started five years ago, I couldn't tell you exactly how we we're going to live five years in the future because I knew it was going to evolve. So rather than worry about the future, what I ended up doing was defining what the present looked like and then making a guess at the future. Now, a lot of times if I ask people how do they live today, they still can't define what that means. So I wanted you to think of it this way. I need you to look at everything you use for power and how much you use to be able to predict the future. When I started five years ago, I took our electric power bill from the utility and I looked at it and said, how much power do I use every month? So in the example I used for myself, we used approximately 300 kilowatt hours per month. Now, if you have 30 days in a month, that equates down to basically 10 kilowatt hours per day. Now within that 10 per day, what I needed to do at that point was to get all the big significant power draws that we used every day and figure out how much each of those used. Now at the time we had two refrigerators, one freezer, an electric water heater, a pool pump, a washing machine, a dryer, a television, and a coffee maker. So this is what I'm gonna to recommend to you, that you need to figure out how much you're using per day on average, and then figure out what your major draws are on that power. Now when it comes time to figure out each component or each piece that's gonna draw power, the things you need to look for is how much power they're using and the time they're using it. Now each appliance is gonna have a sticker on it that should have a power rating or a current draw. Most of the time it's gonna be power in watts, or if it's in current, it'll give you an amps. Once you have all of your appliances figured out of how much power they're drawing in kilowatt hours per day, you can then figure out how all of those match into 10 hours or 10 kilowatt hours per day. Once you have everything figured out, you know what today looks like, you can then forecast that into the future. So I'll tell you, when we did this previously, five years ago, I didn't plan to have a pool in the future, so obviously that one got scratched off the list and my power requirements for the future went down. We today have a fridge, two freezers, and a bunch of other stuff. I didn't plan to have brooder pads. I didn't plan to have a cabinet incubator. So adjusting from where it was five years ago to today, you can subtract and add in a lot of different appliances to figure out what you need from today into the future, and then you can build in your strategy of how do you have more than you need, etc. So don't make this complicated on solar. Define what today is, what are you using for power on each appliance, and then you can start building your future based on what today looks like. So that's your assignment for this weekend. Go out and figure out what power you're using today, what appliances you're using, and how much power in kilowatt hours that they are using. And then we'll start talking about how you turn today into tomorrow. So if you have any questions or comments based on everything I've given here, be sure to drop them below. I will gladly answer comments. And we're going to build this series on how you start with today and build to tomorrow. So that's it from this time from Sprague River Homestead. We'll see you next time.